So part of ATPCO's mission is to ensure that the industry has the right data in the right place at the right time in order to display and sell airline products. We're all aware that passengers are increasingly expecting to tailor their experiences to needs that are more specific. And we're providing the industry with what's available, relevant and usable in the form of NGS attributes. And as we'll see, uh, these are increasingly being used by major airline retailers. And so while our work's by no means done, we all know we've got plenty to do, we can cheerfully say that we've, um, we've truly started. <coughs> So it doesn't feel like that long ago that, that where, where this is where we were. So uh, most flight channels look like this, very informational, yet still not managing to tell me much about my flight. So it's price and schedule only. And um, it's pretty dreary. And, and the display price doesn't tell me what it includes. Where we are today. So shopping pages are usually much more visually pleasing. And here we see that the typical search still nevertheless starts with origin, destination and date. And many excellent retailers um, now also include filters after search. And these are great for answering questions such as whether seat selection is included or a carry on bag in the fare. Or, for example, whether change and cancel fees, you know, how they affect the price or not. We're not seeing many filters um, before search that would put more autonomy in the hands of the shopper to define more of their own criterion before they're served up the list of flights. So is there an opportunity for more product attributes to be included in the initial search to um, present and select the most relevant offers to the customer? And we, we think so. Uh, we anticipate that customers will include, uh, increasingly be picking and choosing um, elements like space and entertainment over simply, say, um, a business class ticket. And search that consistently prioritizes lowest fare is a, a frustratingly reductive experience for the flight shopper and doesn't do um, airline services and products justice. So attribute-based shopping supports customer empowerment, enabling shoppers at the outset to define what they're looking for, you know, what's important to them about a flight, what their priorities are. And as we've been hearing throughout Elevate, <coughs> True airline retailing focuses on the traveler's ability to see the value of the complete airline offer beyond the base fare. But where will we be tomorrow? Well, hopefully in a good place where data, NDS data, attribute data flows, resulting in all kinds of sales and upsell. And to pave the way for this, at the beginning of the year, the industry approved our first set of um, next generation storefront attributes so that they can be included in the, throughout the offer life cycle, so um, in offer creation as well as in search. And our work moving forward is to <coughs> identify new attributes, incorporate industry feedback as to their effectiveness and um, understand their current usage, and then keep the data flow from airlines to channels full and brisk. So the industry is changing and part of our work is understanding the direction that it's moving in, uh, where airlines and channels are in their evolution depending on their need, what their goals are, what barriers they're facing and what ATPCO can do to um, provide industry solutions to help them overcome these barriers. More targeted displays using attributes to define and differentiate an airline's product or service increases the relevance of displayed offers and provides the ability to more finely target to customer micro segments. So airlines also want to improve customer understanding of everything they offer. High infernal filters uh, help by providing a kind of catalog or index of sorts. So whether a shopper is price sensitive or interested in finding flights based on the attributes that matter most to, most to them, enabling shop by attribute decommoditizes flight shopping, enabling a quicker path to booking and enhanced experience. So here we've got um, some example personas created by Brad. Um, 
by enabling, uh, so we, we just go through them, uh, just these three examples. So a 26-year-old remote worker can find all flights with at least 29 inches of seat pitch, power, Wi-Fi, a free carry-on and no change fees from her hometown in the, mid in the Midwest to Florida anytime during the month of February. A business traveler from Cairo can find non-stop flights to Singapore with Wi-Fi, power, a layback seat, food and beverage service, and lounge access. An Australian mother of three can find all fully refundable, refundable flights with priority boarding, entertainment, food and beverage service to visit the grandparents in London this Christmas. I'm going to hand over to David. Thank you, Sophie. So first thing I'll say is I've worked very hard to look like this avatar. I think it takes about 30 years off. Me. I try. So thank you. Um, you've uh, met me earlier today. I'm David. I'm head of ATPCO's Standards and Governance Program. Um, and one way of looking at, is, uh, looking at that is an asset that ATPCO has of some 130 documents that are processing standards. Um, we have interface standards, which are the details of every attribute that, uh, that we distribute and supporting services standards. And that's that critical bit of how those attributes work through the life cycle of the, of the offer and the order through the transaction. So um, as I mentioned this morning, I've come from an airline background, 25 years um, experience of developing standards alongside IATA and um, Airlines for America and um, ARC, who we see here today as well, um, to, for pricing, shopping, taxes, billing and settlement and servicing. So I want to talk a little bit about the, the critical data and standards that make up uh, what we call next generation storefront or an attribute based approach to shopping. So if you're familiar with the work that, um, and it's been a lot of years of work, about three and a half years to develop the next generation storefront original concept, um, actually came from an announcement at Elevate uh, some, some four years back now. And as with most of ATPCO's work for the, for the industry, collaboration was absolutely key in that, coming to consensus on uh, the most shop relevant and airline content heavy attributes that, that we had. So facilitating the industry, we came to the conclusion that these 16 attributes were the, the ones that were shopping relevant enough and had the critical mass to be called uh, next generation storefront element to drive attribute shopping and, and start that move towards where we want to be in the, in the future. And they're grouped, I hope you, hope you find conveniently and intuitively, uh, you'll see the five groupings here. Uh, into areas that we can we can all understand and should uh, should resonate airport baggage onboard seats and flexibility just to give them some more taxonomy so um, taking these to an even higher level uh, you can see not only the shop transparency of all 16 but there are other really good benefits about looking at attributes in this way and having a core set of 16. so Baggage and flexibility attributes are arguably the most scrutinized by regulators and ATPCO has added a lot of value to the industry discussion in terms of consistent data and comprehensive data over the years. So it's good to see them part of the attribute based um, shopping approach as well. There is right now, uh, US Department of Transportation has a notice of proposed rulemaking on ancillary transparency. Um, and the feeling is that should that go anywhere, and we don't know yet, it's, it's very new, it's not uh, published on record yet, just for review, um, that, that this will help that approach for consistency. So let's, uh, let's call these the core elements, our baggage and flexibility side of things. And then we have the, the flight and schedule data for each specific flight. Um, and that's driven by a combination of amenities, uh, data for flight search, and then optional services and brands for, uh, for product. And that's whether the service is available or not and whether it's payable or not. Um, and it includes onboard services, seat attributes, and they're fundamental, of course, to the, the consumer experience in the air when that product is being delivered. Oh, apologies. And then the, um, there are the rest of the attributes. So the attributes are shopping relevant uh, with critical mass of airline content. And they form the basis of the product catalog that we're talking about next door uh, around dynamic offers um, and some of the, the proofs of concept that ATPCO is, is, is uh, facilitating right now. Um, and that's critical as well to moving towards the outcome of offers and orders for the industry driven by dynamic offers. So airport services look likely to be a, a really good driver of that set of attributes as well as the ability to, to advance select a seat. Um, our Offer Presentation Council has just approved the 17th attribute, which you don't see here, it's not in the standard yet. We have a process, 
and we're following it and it's in draft and will be published very shortly. And that's priority check-in. Through our design team, uh, we concluded that that was another shop relevant attribute that had enough uh, airline filed content to be, uh, again, be called a next generation storefront attribute. So do expect more to come. There are design teams, as I mentioned this, uh, earlier this afternoon, working on all these, these attributes. It's not static. Um, it's, it's moving on to meet the need of, um, of modern attribute shopping. Finally, a subject very dear to my heart, being head of standards at, at ATPCO, um, I just want to close with the idea of the importance of standardization. And I go back to a question I was asked at an ancillary services conference in, um, I believe it was 2017. Um, don't standards slow down and stifle innovation? It's a great question to be put on the spot, uh, spot with. But I've had a long time to think about that and uh, the answer to it. And I always come to the conclusion, as I th said this morning, that innovators, of course, should be free to innovate um, where it competitively makes sense to do so and it moves the economy and the industry forward. But the only way to globally scale that and what we see time and time again through network economic effects and, and ATP go facilitating that data to the market is that um, through agile and well-articulated standards, that it's the only way that we can, we can reach global scale. And uh, that's through speed of delivery, accuracy, and um, again, adoption, things with high airline content that, uh, that scales the industry. So you're about to hear from two uh, more speakers that Sophie's already introduced. They're very familiar with the reality of attribute shopping to benefit the, customer, the consumer experience. So you'll hear from Melanie Paul, and she'll tell us about Virgin Atlantic's purposeful and evolutionary journey, uh, bringing uh, next generation storefront attributes to the front and center of channel presentation of their product. And Connie Chung from Expedia, and they have an approach beyond NGS. It's rather than using that specific terminology, Expedia have a broader take on smart shopping using attributes because of their multimodal offering. And uh, Connie will tell you a lot more about that. So without further ado, I'll hand over to Melanie and a clicker for you. Thank you. Thank you, David. Hi all, I'm from Virgin uh, Atlantic and uh, the attributes for um, ATPCO was a huge part of our COVID um, information to the public, really. Uh, we used it initially as a starting point when I first started. I, I had the joy of starting at Virgin Atlantic six weeks before COVID shut down the, the industry. So I came in at a very unique time. Um, but I was furloughed for two months and then came back and this was one of the very first things I actually implemented within the airline was the COVID attributes with the the intense cleaning and the face masks, the, the hygiene packs on board. Uh, we used all the imagery uh, to, to relay that information through. Um, but going back to yesterday's early morning discussion with Jeff, talking about the, the old school um, systems, you know, you look at this and you think you're literally buying a seat. We've, we've all been talking about this in all the presentations over the last two days. You look at this and you have no idea what you're purchasing. Yes, the customer has a seat. Um, I've just been in the merchandising um, forum and in there it was like a seat and a bed, you know, and, and that's literally what we're trying to also portray is we, we've got our JV partners. We work with them very closely. You want to know what you're purchasing when you purchase a Virgin Atlantic seat. Um, the customer wants to know what those attributes are. They don't want to know um, how we get that to them. They just want to know what they're buying. Um, so looking at the old green screen, you know, it's, they, they, they don't know what they're getting. Um, whereas moving forward with the attributes, we're able to display exactly what we're, what we have on offer. So this is our new A330 Neo with our new loft and retreat suite and the new seats and everything on board that we've just released. These, the, this aircraft starts flying this month. Um, so this is the sort of thing that we're able to portray to the agents through the, the attributes. So we're able to give full explanations of exactly what they're getting on board, what carbon has what features and the, the rich imagery that goes with that. So we're able to make sure that what we are selling, they know what they're getting. The question was raised earlier, how does the customer know if there's an aircraft change, if, if things aren't exactly what they expect? 
well, I can say that these are our new aircraft and this is what they're getting. So we've got our JV partners that we also work with, um, which we're very lucky to be working with Delta Air France KLM. And we also have the attributes with our partners as well. So when you purchase an air, a, a ticket for that seat, you, that's also displayed across um, each of the websites. So we've all got these attributes across all of our carriers. So you know that what you're buying and what you're seeing is what you're getting. So this has been a really important thing for all of our businesses, especially with the recovery stage um, over the last few years. So this has been huge for us to be able to push out to the market, have a, a single source of, source of truth as well that goes with that. So we're able to work together and say, right, this is what we have. Everything is stored in one place. Um, the, the imagery comes from our website. So we're able to have the same content from our website going through the, the Root Happy application with the attributes and the information to go with that. Um, and we're finding that this is a huge benefit to the business because the uptick in upsell um, has also been phenomenal because you can go from, yeah, you have a seat, um, you may not want a bag, fine, you can purchase that, no problem. Then you can say, actually, I do need a bag because I'm going to go on a shopping trip. But that's exactly what I need. So it's the sort of thing where I need to make sure that I do have that extra baggage space because, you know, coming to the US, who wouldn't go shopping? So it's that sort of thing where you want to go back with that extra uh, luggage space and have that with you. Um, and, you know, going into the, the business class or the upper class, you know, you've got that, that retreat suite where you can sit back um, have people come and sit with you, have little mini meetings. Um, and then you've also got the loft, which is like the, the lounge on board. So it's, it's, it, it does everything that we need. Um, saying that, going back to what David was saying, the innovation doesn't stop. Um, we found that with our JV partners, we want to make sure that we can keep progressing with those displays, make sure that everything that we're selling, they sell, is aligned. Uh, and we're continually uh, developing that relationship and putting those ideas and suggestions forward to ATPCO to then put those onto the roadmap for future development as well. So this is working really quite well for us. So, you know, if, if anyone has any ideas, you know, just raise a change request and uh, send it through to David. Uh, thank you. <laughs> or your account manager, like asthma, uh, and, and they'll take care of it. So, yeah, it's, it, it, it does work well for us. It's something that uh, we, we couldn't have lived without, to be honest, without, throughout COVID. It was just a really, really great product for us to be able to push out and keep the, the, the trade informed of everything going on. I think um, we can pass over. Thank Great, you. thank you, thank you, Melanie. So just before I hand hand the clicker over to Connie, just to mention, you will see those these uh, Slido tags. Please do um, use your phone to capture those, and if you want to ask a question anonymously or otherwise, um, I will be seeing them here and will ask them. I'll save the one that I've got because it's for Connie after you've spoken. Right. Um, but please do <laughs> get the questions rolling in. It will be a lively discussion afterwards. I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see the question, but hopefully I magically answer the question, whatever it is. Oh, that's not me. So next generation storefront um, isn't about ATP Co designing displays, because after all, it's not our next generation storefront, it's your gen next generation storefront. So we help with getting the best data to drive the best customer experience, sharing industry feedback so that airlines understand channel perspectives and vice versa, um, so that we can continue to iterate and get even better. In our mind, um, any storefront that encourages shoppers beyond the base fares and uses NGS to do this is an NGS channel. And great examples of NGS channels exist, but this is um, a mock-up of some of the ingredients um, that go into uh, a, a great next generation storefront. So attribute filters to enable shoppers to quickly find the products that they 
um, desire most, and comparative displays provide a home for visual content and make it easy for shoppers to understand differences between offers at a glance. And now over to Connie. <laughs> Thank you. Hi folks, my name is Connie Chung. I lead the Air product team for Expedia Group based out of Seattle. Uh, yesterday, I spoke a little bit, I touched on all these points, I think, yesterday, but we get to go a little deeper today. Um, our goal at Expedia is to make sure we want to deliver the best travel experience possible. I'm in charge of the AIR team, uh, but obviously within Expedia Group, we have many other product areas, and we get to leverage learnings from other areas such as lodging, vacation rentals, to improve upon travel experiences. Um, for anyone visiting our sites. And so uh, yesterday I talked about smart shopping and how that is something that is already live on our lodging space. Uh, they are talking about similar problems that we have in the air industry where you have all these attributes, right? In, in the lodging world, it's um, do I have uh, breakfast included? Is Wi-Fi included? That's mostly free nowadays, I think. Um, but other attributes within that lodging experience that they've also had to say, how do I take out pieces to get something to um, travelers so that they understand what they're buying? Well, they're a little bit ahead of where we are, I think, in the industry, and so now we're doing that on the air side. So in air, we're very, very focused. We've been spending this whole year um, doing research on how we present attributes clearly to travelers so that they can go in and have transparency and confidence in booking. Um, Tied to that confidence, there are many other things that we've been launching. So before I jump into all the attribute-based shopping stuff, we do uh, a lot of focus on ensuring that our travelers trust what they're buying from us. And they trust that the information that we're providing um, is accurate and valuable for them. And so one of the features we launched back in May this year was price tracking and predictions. So we are leveraging our AI uh, team's knowledge to predict pricing for a flight and someone can track if they do a search, for example, for myself, it was Seattle over to DCA this time. I can say track this price and I'll get notifications when the prices go up or down a certain threshold. Um, and that also is an AI-driven threshold that we're using. And so this just helps customers and travelers understand like, hey, you can trust that we're gonna go out and find you the best deal. Very, very much tied to that is a product that we have called Price Match Promise. This is one of our InsureTech products and it allows uh, travelers to have the confidence to book. Hey, even if you don't have the cheapest price now, if you have Price Match Promise, if that price does drop, you're just gonna get money back automatically. Um, that delight that comes with just getting free money back is like something you can't explain, right? Um, I think Amazon did that for me recently on a purchase. It was like, here's $2 back. I'm like, it's just $2, but you just gave it to me. Um, I think Costco does the same, right? You can do this price match. And so it's an offering that we have on our air product and that we have seen an increase in trust and delight in the product. Um, so I talk about these things because it really tees up the philosophy that we have. We want people to have confidence that what we are giving is transparent, uh, it's real time, it's accurate, and that what, whatever they see on the site is to help the traveler, right? It's not to um, have someone say, oh, you know, you don't want to um, almost spam someone into thinking, you know, sometimes people have about urgency messaging, being a little too spammy, like, there's only one ticket left. Do I really trust you that there's only one ticket left, right? And so those are some of the things that we want to ensure that we see our travelers experience. So I mentioned yesterday also that we've been working on bringing out attributes further up funnel. So not, we used to do a lot of selling on the checkout page after you've already picked um, the flights that you wanted. And instead we have been bringing that and testing all this year, bringing some of those attributes further up the funnel from the checkout page. What is really, really cool is every single test we have launched this year, we have rolled out because every single test we've launched this year has been a winner. And winner means like in this case, we are measuring, do we see people increasing the purchase of non-restricted fares, right? So that they're not just buying a basic economy flight, but they're actually buying something that is valuable to them because we've shown the value of an upsold option and they see and can easily compare, hey, what's the difference between this fare and the next fare up? Why does it cost 50 US dollars more? Oh, now I understand it. Yes, that is valuable to me and I'm gonna go ahead and purchase that. So we've spent all year already teeing this up and um, one of our fun stats I think I can share. Oh, one click for me, Brad. <laughs> 
One of the fun stats I can share is we moved seat selection up the funnel just by one page, and we saw a 94% increase in choosing seats. So there are tiny, what feels like a tiny, tiny test that you can run that absolutely makes a difference. Um, and we see that replicated. Yesterday, I think someone asked me what I see on the app experiences. We see that experience replicated and the same results replicated in the app too. Um, so these wins that we see on the web experiences, we also test in our iOS app, our Android app, and it's the same thing. We see that increase in non-restricted fare purchases. We see um, people buying these upsold options. So that's been very exciting and encouraging, and it helps us uh, believe that the smart shopping path we're on is the right path to continue to emphasize that transparency. Um, I'm going to share a demo shortly after this slide on smart shopping. And what we've really been focused on, uh, I mentioned we've already bringing all of these attributes up front, further up funnel. We're going even further up funnel. So we're trying to reimagine, like Sophie was talking earlier, it's not just about schedule and price, but if I am able to choose the different attributes I already know I care about for a specific trip, let's start as up funnel as we can so that travelers get that experience earlier, right? And you're not just walking the path up and down over and over again. Um, in addition, we have um, our uh, machine learning models that we use to also impact our sort models so that we're able to say, hey, for this person, can I personalize their search results so that what you get back is based off of different attributes you've already told us you care about. So we've already launched our first um, AI-based uh, recommended search this year, and we'll continue to refine that. Um, but I'm going to walk you through a quick demo, a caveat. Uh, this was a demo we put together back in May. And like I mentioned, we are constantly doing research and studies and iterating. So what we plan on launching by the end of this year doesn't quite look like what you'll see in this demo, but it gives you a flavor of where our minds have been and how we're iterating and um, focusing and trying different things to try to make sure that what we put forward is the best experience possible. And whatever we put forward at the end of this year, we may not hit the mark perfectly either, and we'll keep iterating, okay? So uh, what you see here first is someone's coming to our Expedia app to do a flight search. Uh, this is just a simple one way for demonstration purposes. And in this case, we're gathering some pre-filtered information, right? This is things that we often see people click on the most, time of day, how many stops, everyone wants a non-stop, preferably, um, and some of these attributes that I care about. Do I care about seat choice? Do I need my bags chosen for me? I mentioned price tracking earlier, and what we're doing here is saying, hey, if someone really cares about adding a seat or a bag, I can say, yes, I care about it. You can see that price changes and increases to show, so you're really able to compare apples to apples amongst the different airlines right up at the first page. So once you've selected um, the carrier, in this case, Conway Air, um, what we've done is said, OK, now you kind of see your typical schedule and price. And you can see and compare different um, um, uh, fare types and seat types. And so from here, you can choose and say, hey, with visual content, can I get a better experience and understanding of what I'm going to get between different fares? I can pop in and dive in to see what um, content is available. I can see fares and fees and what's included and what's not included. And this is an area where I can now choose my seats. So in that merchandising page, what we call our merchandising hub, you can add all these different attributes here we're just talking about, right? Whether it's seats or bags or Wi-Fi or, or meal purchases, that all happens here. I mentioned price match promise earlier to give you confidence to book. Um, and you go ahead and check out. And this is kind of a typical checkout experience. So that's a bit of a preview of what we've been doing with Smart Shopping. Like I mentioned, we're going to launch our first, what we call our uh, MLPs, our minimal lovable products. Um, the first one's going to launch by the end of this year for AIR, and we will keep iterating. What you saw there, like I said, won't be the exact thing in, in the end of this year, but you understand a little bit of where we're going with this. The whole gist of it is transparency, confidence to book, uh, trust that Expedia is trying to provide the best options and surface the best options for our travelers. Okay. So to sum up, um, everybody, all customers, are better served by clearly defined attributes to facilitate the most informed decision making. As David mentioned, uh, is this the right way? 
As David mentioned, the Offer Presentation Council has just approved Attribute 17, Priority Check-in. And basically, NGS isn't some dusty, static thing. It's a living standard and what you, the industry, make it. Airlines by providing their strategic input and, of course, their data, and channels by using this input and data to guide our shoppers to what they need and want for that trip on that occasion. And so now we'll move to Q&A, is that right? Yes, for sure. So um, I know that we haven't got the QR code up here, but it's slido.com, hashtag NGS. Hopefully you, you hit the QR code, or you can just raise your hand. We have some roaming mics, or you can shout out. We have two questions. Um, I'll address the first two um, to Melanie first, just to give Connie a break for a second. Um, somebody asked, should, in your opinion, should the user be responsible for choosing their attributes, or should the channel who knows their customers be tuned to preference and surface uh, appropriate options? I'll ask you the same question afterwards, Connie, as well. That is a very good question. Um, well, the information that we input um, is in regards to how us as an airline wants to display our content to the customer. Uh, however, saying that, this application also provides the, the ability to personalise um, the, the customer's preferences once that display has been provided. So as an airline, we're able to then have the information displayed how we'd like it, um, and then that gives the customer the choice to be able to then go ahead and select what they would prefer. So in theory, um, it's a bit of both. Thank you. So, uh, so room for innovation uh, from, from, the, from the channel. Yeah, well. Perfect. It's, it's never, it's never ending. Thank <laughs> you. So, same question to you, uh, you Connie. Your opinion on that? Yeah, um, I think there's a balance to strike. So, um, I mentioned an example yesterday where, even for myself, even if Expedia knows me perfectly, when I'm traveling wearing the hat of mom of four kid, elementary school kids, it's very different than when I travel for business, right? And so you really want, yes, we want to personalize. Yes, we want to make this as easy as possible, but there's also context that we need to understand when people are searching. Um, and then I talk about often an example called the creepy factor. You don't want to get so personalized that you start getting creeped out. Uh, the example I have is I recently had a creepy factor uh, situation with a large online retailer. Um, I was ordering COVID tests because my family got COVID and through Washington State, they're free. So you can just get them through our government website, but um, it's shipped through this large online retailer. And because it was shipped by them, I started getting ads to buy COVID tests in my search results even though I never searched for it within there, right? It gets that creepy, like, ooh, how did you know that? Like, why do you know this information? And, and you don't want to get to the point where, where it's gotten there. I can't imagine it being too hard in like the air search path to really creep people out, but you know, there's definitely a balance of applying all the smarts and technology we can to help personalize something, to balance that with like, what can we provide that is the, the best option for you? So um, I think there are opportunities really to accelerate and improve personalization in air search, um, in the air search space, but um, also to balance it with not getting too creepy. Great stuff. Thank you. So, so yeah, I think sim similar answer there, the bit of both. So channels can in should innovate to yeah. a point, but not to the point. So your great phrase, I will certainly use again to not have the creepy Good factor. factor. <laughs> um, so somebody was interested in the, uh, the ticket with price match promise if a lower fare is found and asked if Expedia does that in the uh, yes. February issue. Yes, Expedia we do. Expedia does. So yeah, that's good. what I was sharing. We, did, we do have price match promise. And the great thing about that is there's no impact to the carrier, to the airline. Um, Expedia is covering that, right? So if the traveler um, sees a certain price, it's like, huh, I'm not sure if I should book. But because there's price match promise, I'll go ahead. Um, when the traveler has bought at that certain price point, if it drops, I mean, as the airline, you're made whole, right? That total ticket price that was purchased, that's what the airline gets. And we refund the customer back whatever the difference is that the price has dropped. So that is a guarantee that we're providing as Expedia Group. Right? Like nope. It's, it's fully on the Expedia Correct. It is just an Expedia benefit that we're providing or, or a product that we're providing for our travelers to choose to purchase. And if there's not ever a price change? Then nothing happens. And they don't get $15? Yeah. Yep. Great, thank you for that. And I noticed there's a lot of ring with the microphone. Sorry, sorry. Yes, please. 
15 dollars uh, flat fee or it's also calculated? Um, we obviously, as with everything we're doing, we test things, and so we have variations on pricing um, for the price match for promise price. product. Yeah. Is it personalized? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we definitely have, uh, what I would say is we definitely are trying, you know, to make sure that we hit a correct amount to make sure we're attaching correctly, but also providing the best traveler uh, experience we can. Yeah. Great stuff. Thank you. So this next question, I'll, I'll start out with and I'll see if um, any of the rest of us have an opinion on it. What happened to shelves and drawers? I thought they were a great way to display offers. So it actually gives me a chance to give a little bit of history on the pivot, but um, that basically kind of facilitating the industry took with the next generation storefront approach uh, in January of 2021. So up to that point, there was a very big emphasis on uh, writing very detailed processing standards that got displayed basically with shelves and drawers. Um, we, we got a lot of feedback on that, but our standards initially should focus on, on core data and standards that drive the data that should allow channels to innovate on display, whether that be shelves and drawers or whatever that might mean. So we do define the term next generation storefront. We say what it is, we define an attribute, uh, we have critical mass for it, we have the 16 attributes within there. We do stop short of defining uh, what a shelf and a drawer is and, and how a channel uh, should display. So from ATP Go's perspective, that's where that conversation went with the design teams right now are completely focused on the, the raw data and standards that drive that consistent result. And we uh, need display to, to innovators. Anybody else want to comment on, on the shelves and drawers concept? I'm, I'm more than happy Please. to comment on that, yeah. Please. So um, from Virgil Atlantic, we actually file all 16 of the attributes that were displayed earlier. Um, we find that it, it does help um, advise the customer what products they get with each of the, the, the products that we sell. Uh, we have our fair families uh, and all those attributes are listed within those fair families. Um, we also work really closely, like I said earlier, with our JV partners as well, with the joint ventures. So um, that keeps us aligned with the products that we're selling and what our partners are selling. Uh, and I won't say it standardizes things because we all like to have our little nuances within each each carrier um, but it's it, it's something that we are working towards to have a stable um, workflow and and display across the, the JV partners so this is something that we are working towards um, and I think it's going quite well it's taken quite a while to, to try and uh, formalize that across four large carriers um, and, and get agreement. But uh, yeah, it's it, it seems to be working. So uh, watch this space. <laughs> Great, thank you. I think that makes an excellent point of where standards and innovation play well together. The, the yeah. standards stop at a point where shelves and drawers still have value. It's just as an industry standard, if we can't get consensus, then we're spending a lot of industry time trying to get to a standard for something that should be innovated and clearly doing that very successfully. Yeah. Um, thank you. I have another question that's, that's related. Who decided on the attributes and what were the criteria for those attributes? Um, so historically, the next generation storefront um, uh, group, uh, I believe it ran for a couple of years before we pivoted to raw data and standards. And basically that group came up with the attributes that were shop relevant and had enough airline content to make sense. So the idea was to hit the sweet spot of the right groupings of attributes that, that looked like they were the, the next use case for, uh, for really good, valuable attribute shopping, meaningful to the consumer. The criteria we actually honed with the standards, so we did publish the standards earlier this year, we're coming up on version three now, and we publish how much content um, each, uh, not each airline, in aggregate, how many airlines are filing content for each of them. So our criteria is that um, it, each, each of the attributes must have at least 50 airlines filing data for that attribute, or 30% of available seat kilometers are covered by the airlines filing that. So there, there is this measure, and it was a, a little bit of an arbitrary number, but we got industry consensus, and so that went into the standard as kind of a baseline for, we're not going to just make any attribute um, a next generation storefront attribute, it has to have some weight for, uh, for shopping relevance. 
And again, I'll just ask if there are any other comments on that one. If not, we'll do the next question uh, as well. For Expedia, again. Um, have Expedia experimented with weighting the value of attributes similar to weighting the value of uh, price and duration? Um, weighting the, so what we, uh, hopefully I'll answer this correctly, what we uh, do to determine maybe if that means like the, the importance, like how much that attribute matters to a traveler, uh, what we're doing is constantly uh, checking how people utilize our site. Right, so how people are scrolling up and down, where people are pausing, where they're going back up funnel, coming back down. And so those are indicators, for example, if you take a, let's start with something really simple, like nonstop, that's the first filter everyone clicks, right? I mentioned that earlier, we know because they click on that one. So if you look at attributes, you can look at that similarly. If there's um, a filter or an option to say, hey, I want a flight that also includes a checked bag, right? And we say now we whittle that down to fares of that type. Um, that's how we start determining what attributes matter more based off of how people are using the site. So um, from that, we then prioritize like order. So you know, in that demo, we had that pre-filter phase at the very beginning before search results came up. How we choose what goes in there is based off of what our customers or travelers are telling us, right? If they're using that, that means it matters to them. If they're not, then maybe it's less a lower priority and maybe isn't something we would highlight um, on some of those first pages. So it's all based off of what our travelers are telling us with their clicks and feedback. And, you know, we have all sorts of ways of gathering that information, whether it's just clicks on the site. We also have a lot of um, site intercept surveys that come in. We have feedback pages, um, many, many different forums to get that information back to our product teams Excellent. to prioritize. Yeah. Thank you. I'd love to throw the same question to Melanie, actually, because you mentioned you're following all 16 of the attributes. Um, is, it, is it something that you're looking at as well from a user perspective, user preference of attributes makes them better here, or are all 16 um, having equal, equal weight? Yeah, so the attributes are really equal weight in our eyes uh, because we have the fair families. Uh, all those attributes are, are applied to each um, bundle. Um, so each one has a specific purpose for that, that purchase for the customer. Um, in that respect, we are telling the customer what they're getting as part of that rather than giving them that flexibility um, to, of choice. Uh, but saying that, I think what we're doing seems to be working because we, we're still flying after all these hard times. So uh, yeah, the, the, the product, I think, um, is, is speaking volumes. Um, what, we, what we provide works um, and the customers are happy. And if we do get feedback on uh, any of those attributes where they, they think an improvement can be made, we definitely take that on board and, uh, and assess and, and work through and roll out more um, functionalities, really. It, like we said earlier, it's, a, it's always a growth um, product. Absolutely. Dusty old stand, very dynamic. Not the stand is a dusty, I never, never will that. But if, if it's coming from a customer and a user experience, um, it, it's definitely worthwhile looking at it. Going back to the TripAdvisor um, comments earlier, where if you're getting that feedback, you need to take that on board because if someone's making that effort to come to you and say, actually, I think this would be a really good idea they're obviously not going to be the first person who thought of that. They're the first person to come forward and suggest it, um, which means that you need to do that analysis, take a look, see what, whether it is feasible um, and obviously how difficult it is to get on the roadmap and implementation, but that's a whole other thing. But it's, it's there to, for the taking. So if someone makes that effort, then you need to make that effort to look into it. Great, yeah. thank you. And I will say that uh, just, just to add to that, that the design team, a lot of the activity has been this pent up kind of uh, the airlines joining the design team saying these things are relevant to me for my shopping experience. Some of them don't have the weight of airline content yet, so they're not really shop relevant enough. But we do actually add them to the standard as attributes. They're not next generation storefront attributes yet because they don't have the, uh, the airline content. Open seating is a great example where one airline's using it, and it's incredibly important for that airline to have it. So we added it to the standard uh, as, a, as an attribute. 
um, and it has not been <coughs> some codes, it can be then included with the brand um, and, and so forth. So it is kind of an incubator for those attributes to get more out of content as they become more, more shop relevant through experience. Thank you. So we do we do have about 15 minutes left. I don't have any more questions on Slido. Um, anyone want to raise a hand? Anyone? Burning questions you'd like to ask? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just put them in the slide. <laughs> <laughs> A certain dress uh, <coughs> character, that's one of us, uh, was very, very, it still continues to have to be very strong for the uh, presentation of a upsell opportunity in the earliest possible um, place of the lake of upsell in the system. Yes. Um, and some channels are uh, being that they believe it is. Fully uh, given the transparency up front gives the customer what they want in terms of saying, "Oh yes, that's that's the upsell is the actual thing I want." But I was curious whether that philosophy fits your customer base, or whether you think that taking them through the uh, the, the path, uh, a different path, I should say, ultimately does does that ultimately land them in that same place, or do they think that they land them in a different? In terms of what attributes they appreciate and want to move off purchase. Is that question for me? Yeah. I saw you looking at me. So was, um, did everyone hear that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll try to summarize. So there's a large US carrier, I think you said, that is very focused on extra legroom as an attribute. And maybe that implies others are less focused on it. Well, they, they, um, they very strongly advocated to uh, add it. Um, that option yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah. And therefore, they're, they're very strongly pro NGS. Okay. And um, but, um, you know, with, with that being sort of not the, the recommended standard anymore. And a certain cha and channel like yourself that didn't adopt that and just went, went in a different direction. I mean, did you, was your experience that the, the users were still selecting that and appreciative of seeing that, that option uh, on the second page as opposed to the first page of listings, I guess. Yeah, uh, so for Expedia, um, I think you're, you're saying like, if we're not handling a specific use case for one carrier, if I can summarize it as that, then what happens? Are we still seeing travelers be able to pick up on that even if we don't call it out specifically? Is that one? Um, so, you know, we're dealing with 500 some airlines, so the scale at which we're doing something uh, is different than obviously if that airline.com has their own site, right, to focus on that. Um, and the approach we take is similar to what I've already mentioned before. Um, if we're looking at customer feedback and we're seeing, hey, um, for example, if I can look at increases in non-restricted fare purchases still, it may not be the one specific attribute that we're able to pick up on, but if I can tell that the other work I'm doing helps drive up non-restricted fares, then, um, and, and again, I'm looking, when I'm running these, I'm looking at this globally, right, across all the airlines and all the, you know, websites that we have, um, then I would consider that a win for both the airline industry and, and Expedia and for travelers, right? So um, our focus isn't just on one specific uh, scenario for, for one airline. Um, and, and that's how we handle that. We're, we're testing constantly. So um, I, I believe we've also had this conversation with this airline too. And, and that's, that's exactly how I've said it. We, we're testing and we're looking and if there's enough customer traveler feedback, um, that there is more information needed, more transparency about something. Um, if legroom becomes a thing that everyone wants to know about, they want to know the exact seat pitch, like that's not something we highlight today, like how many inches you have exactly, but if that becomes something, we're absolutely willing to test that on our site too. Excellent, thank you for the question. Do I have any other questions today? <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs>